Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Feeling great after giving up alcohol, you should be proud. But don't be fooled, early sobriety is full of hidden traps. Today we're talking about 10 critical things to watch out for in your first 90 days of sobriety. This isn't about scaring you, but about giving you the tools and awareness to navigate this crucial phase. Let's uncover these hidden dangers together and help you stay on track for a healthier, happier you. You're a couple weeks in, maybe a month, and you're feeling fantastic. The world seems brighter and you're more in tune with yourself. The fog has lifted, your energy is up, and life feels full of promise. Every day feels like a new beginning, filled with endless possibilities. This my friend, is the honeymoon phase of sobriety. It's a beautiful thing, a time to cherish and hold on to. But don't let this newfound clarity fool you. It can be deceptive, making you think you're invincible. This is often when the little whispers start creeping in. They're subtle at first, but they grow louder. You might find yourself thinking, see, it wasn't that bad. Maybe I can handle just one drink now. These thoughts can be dangerous. Let me tell you something. That kind of thinking is a slippery slope. It's a path that leads back to old habits. You're starting to romanticize your relationship with alcohol, forgetting the damage it caused, the pain, the loss, the regret. Remember why you quit in the first place. Those reasons are still valid still important. Those reasons haven't magically disappeared. They're still there, waiting to remind you of the journey you've undertaken. Write them down, keep them close, and revisit them often, especially when those cravings hit. Make them your anchor. This is about breaking a cycle, not hitting the pause button. It's about creating a new, healthier life. Early sobriety is a fragile time. It's a period of rebuilding and rediscovery. You need to be vigilant, protect your sobriety fiercely, and don't underestimate the power of those early cravings. They can be relentless. Surround yourself with support, whether it's a therapist, a support group, or trusted friends and family. Their support is invaluable. Enjoy the clarity. Embrace the positive changes, but don't mistake them for a free pass to go back to old habits. Stay strong, stay committed. Let's talk about your social circle. Now I'm not saying you have to ditch your friends who drink, but you need to take a hard look at the influence they have on your sobriety. Are they being supportive or are they subtly sabotaging your efforts? If you're finding yourself constantly around alcohol, it's time to set some boundaries. This might mean declining invitations to certain events, having honest conversations with your friends about your sobriety, or even taking a temporary step back from certain relationships. Remember your sobriety comes first. It's not selfish to prioritize your well-being. True friends will understand and support your decision. If they don't, well, that tells you everything you need to know. Seek out support groups, online communities, or sober social events where you can connect with people who understand your journey. Remember, you are who you surround yourself with. Choose your influences wisely. Surround yourself with people who uplift you, encourage you, and respect your decision to live a sober life. You've been doing great. You're feeling good, you're looking good, and you're feeling pretty darn proud of yourself. You've earned that pride, but hold your horses. This is where the sobriety siren starts singing a dangerous tune. You're practically begging for temptation to come knocking. Now, I'm not saying you have to keep it a secret. Sharing your journey with trusted friends and family can be incredibly helpful. But broadcasting it to the world, especially on social media, can create unnecessary pressure and scrutiny. Remember, sobriety is a personal journey. 
It's about you, your health and your well-being. Focus on building a solid foundation for your sobriety before you start shouting it from the rooftops. Quiet confidence is key here. Let your actions speak louder than words. Trust me, the right people will recognize and celebrate your strength and determination. This one's about facing your demons head on, those old haunts. Those familiar watering holes, those places where you used to drown your sorrows in a bottle. They were your escape, your refuge, but also your prison. You might think you can handle it, that you're strong enough to resist the temptation. You tell yourself, just one drink won't hurt. But let me tell you something. You're playing with fire. And fire has a way of spreading uncontrollably. Those places hold memories and not the good kind. They're filled with moments of regret, pain and loss. They're laced with triggers that can send you spiralling back into old habits, faster than you can say happy hour. It's a slippery slope. The sights, the sounds, the smells, they're all designed to pull you back in. They whisper to you, reminding you of the past. Now I'm not saying you have to become a hermit and avoid all social gatherings for the rest of your life. Socialising is important, but it needs to be done wisely. But in these early days, you need to be strategic, mindful and protect your sobriety like it's the Hope Diamond. Choose your environments wisely. Surround yourself with supportive people. Opt for new places. Explore different activities and create new healthy associations. Find joy in things that don't revolve around alcohol. If you find yourself in a situation where you're feeling triggered, have an escape plan. Know your exits and don't be afraid to use them. Your sobriety is worth more than any social pressure or awkward encounter. It's your life, your health, your future. There's a whole world of new experiences waiting for you. Experiences that don't involve a hangover. Embrace them and you'll find a new kind of freedom. You've made it a month, two months, maybe even longer. You're feeling good, you're feeling strong and that little voice starts whispering again. Just one drink, it says. You deserve it. It won't hurt. Don't listen to that voice. It's a liar, a deceiver, a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is one of the most dangerous traps in early sobriety. The belief that you can control it now, that you're somehow different, that you've magically developed the ability to moderate. Let me be blunt. You haven't. Addiction is not a switch you can turn on and off. It's a disease, a cunning and baffling one at that. And just one drink can be all it takes to reactivate those cravings, to send you spiralling back into the abyss. Remember all the work you've done the progress you've made, the healthier, happier life you're building. Is one drink, one night of fleeting pleasure, worth jeopardising all of that? You're stronger with support, and there's absolutely no shame in asking for it. You've given up the booze, you're feeling great, but now you find yourself reaching for the cookie jar, the candy aisle, or that extra large coffee with an extra shot of espresso. Sound familiar? Here's the thing. Addiction is a tricky beast. When we take away one vice, our brains are hardwired to seek out a replacement. You might find yourself replacing alcohol with sugar, caffeine, nicotine or even workaholism. These might seem like harmless substitutes, but they can quickly turn into unhealthy coping mechanisms themselves. Now you do not have to live a life of complete deprivation. A little indulgence here and there is perfectly fine, but it's about being mindful, about recognizing when a habit starts to control you rather than you controlling it. This is a time to cultivate healthy habits, to nourish your body and mind with positive choices. 
Remember, sobriety is not just about what you give up, it's about what you gain. You've ditched the booze, you're feeling healthier, but now you're facing a new challenge, boredom. Those hours that were once filled with drinking are now stretching out before you, empty and daunting. This is a common trap in early sobriety. Without alcohol to numb the feelings, you might find yourself grappling with boredom, restlessness and even a sense of emptiness. This is when the cravings can hit hardest, whispering promises of escape and relaxation. But here's the thing, boredom is not your enemy. It's an opportunity. It's a chance to rediscover yourself, to explore new passions, and to create a life that's so fulfilling you won't even miss the booze. This is the time to try those things you've always wanted to do, but never had the time or motivation for. Take up a new hobby, join a gym, learn a new language, volunteer for a cause you care about, reconnect with old friends, or explore your creative side. Remember, sobriety is not about deprivation. It's about expansion. It's about opening yourself up to new experiences, new connections and new possibilities. Life doesn't stop just because you've decided to get sober. In fact, it often feels like the world keeps spinning faster, throwing more challenges your way. It might feel like the challenges are amplified now that you're facing them without your usual coping mechanism. The stress can seem overwhelming and the urge to revert to old habits can be strong. Work deadlines, relationship issues, financial woes. Stress is a part of life and it can be a major trigger for relapse. These stresses don't disappear. They demand new ways of coping. You might find yourself romanticizing those days when you could just pour yourself a drink and numb the pressure. It's tempting to think that alcohol was a quick fix. But here's the thing. Alcohol wasn't solving your problems. It was just delaying them. The issues were still there waiting for you, often magnified by the consequences of drinking. And in the long run, it was probably creating more problems than it solved. Temporary escape came with a heavy price affecting your health, relationships and overall well-being. So, what's the alternative? Well, it's about finding healthy coping mechanisms that address the stress, not just mask it. It's about building resilience and finding sustainable ways to manage life's pressures. Exercise is a powerful stress reliever, releasing endorphins that boost your mood and clear your head. Physical activity can be a game changer in your recovery journey. Meditation and deep breathing exercises can help calm your nervous system and bring a sense of peace. These practices can ground you and provide a moment of tranquility amidst chaos. Journaling can be a great way to process your emotions and gain clarity. Writing down your thoughts can help you understand and navigate your feelings better and sometimes just talking it out with a trusted friend, therapist or support group can make a world of difference. Sharing your struggles can lighten the load and provide new perspectives. Remember, you don't have to navigate this alone. Support is available and leaning on others can be a crucial part of your recovery. It's easy to fall into the trap of feeling sorry for yourself, especially in early sobriety. You might find yourself thinking, why me? Why can't I just have a drink like everyone else? You might feel like you're missing out, like life is passing you by. This victim mentality is a dangerous trap. It keeps you stuck in a cycle of negativity, resentment and self-pity, which are all fertile ground for relapse. Here's the thing. You're not a victim. You're a warrior. You've made the courageous decision to take control of your life, to break free from the chains of addiction. That's something to be celebrated, not mourned. 
instead of focusing on what you're missing out on. Shift your focus to what you're gaining. You're gaining your health, your relationships, your self-respect. You're gaining the opportunity to live a life that's authentic, fulfilling and free from the grip of addiction. Remember, every day sober is a victory. So you're out in the world navigating social situations and someone offers you a drink, you decline and then comes the inevitable question. Why aren't you drinking? This can be a tricky situation, especially in early sobriety. You might feel pressured to explain yourself, to justify your decision, or even to make up excuses. You might worry about being judged, ridiculed or ostracized. But here's the thing. You don't owe anyone an explanation. Your sobriety is your business, and you get to decide who you share it with and how you share it. If you're not comfortable explaining yourself, that's perfectly okay. A simple no, thank you is enough. If you do choose to share your sobriety, do it with confidence and conviction. Own your decision. You don't need to apologize for it or make excuses. You're not asking for permission. You're stating a fact. So there you have it, 10 common pitfalls of early sobriety and how to navigate them like a pro. Remember, this is your journey and it's going to be full of ups and downs, twists and turns. But you're not alone. Join our community for support and inspiration. Share your experiences, your struggles and your triumphs in the comments below. Let's create a space where we can lift each other up share resources and celebrate each other's successes. Keep going, you've got this.